guys, it's Lindsay, and today we're going to be talking about how I prep for my first draft. I love videos like this. I love learning about everybody's different processes. I take little tips from everyone and then I combine them into my own and it just it helps me grow so much. The way I see my process is when I am outlining, that is when I use my creative story creating process, right? So when I actually get into drafting, which is a different beast, the only creativity I need at that point is like prose level creativity. Some people don't like that. They would get super bored by the fact that they already have their story kind of figured out. But for me, I like am paralyzed unless I know where I'm going with my story. Pantsing makes my pits a little spicy. So anyways, let's just get into the video and I will tell you guys about how I get ready for my first draft. So I guess there are two processes I do before I actually start drafting and the first one is brainstorming and then the one that follows is outlining. So starting with brainstorming, some of the best advice that I ever got was before you even think about story structure and character arc and all those things you want to do with your story, uh, you need to think about what you personally like to read in books and what you personally want to explore in your own book. These can be totally random and unrelated things. Um, when I first started writing my first book, I made a list of character heroines that I really loved in YA. So I was like Katniss Everdeen, Hermione Granger, Gemma Doyle, and like I just listed them out. And then when it came time to create my characters, I was like, well, I love all of these girls, so let's just take traits from them and like add a few more of my own and then I have my main character and I I love her so much. <laughs> what I usually end up doing is writing all of the things I want to explore or my story ideas down on note cards. I find this incredibly helpful. I keep them all together in this little note card holder and I pull them out and flip through them as I'm starting a story so I can see fun things that I want to explore that I haven't had time to yet, magic systems that would be awesome, character profiles that are unique or new to me that I really want to toy with. My next step after that is to flip through all of these note cards. Um, most of the time my stories come from just combining two, three, four of the ideas into one book. My current WIP, which is a middle grade witchy book, was actually the product of three note cards combined together. I did a character profile I wanted to toy with, a setting, and a magic system. The next step for me is the most fun step. I love this one more than any other part of the writing process and it's so sad because it's in the very beginning and it's like the shortest stage for me. But my very favorite part of the writing process is just sitting down, laying down, getting in a hot tub, taking a shower, taking a walk, and daydreaming about your characters. <laughs> this sounds so silly, but I swear by it, it works so well for me. What I do is I just come up with a general idea of who these characters are. I don't really know yet at this point, but I kind of have an inkling and I just put them in different settings. They can be settings that maybe um, I want to explore in the book or situations I want to explore, but most of the time it's just them waking up in the morning going down and getting coffee if that's something they do, interacting with the people in their household or around them, and I just play out these dialogue scenes and these just uh, actions that these characters would take and you would not believe how much like I, I guess you would learn or I learn from doing this. It's incredible. I just feel like I really need to spend time with my characters and figure out who they are and really mull over the finer details. I do all of the crazy funky character profiles online. Yes, the ones that are like 82 questions and get super specific. I love those. I was talking to my CP about this the other day and I was telling her how I love to do the really specific character profiles, ones with like ridiculous questions like, if your character was a superhero, what superhero power would they have? Have, or how do they take their coffee in the morning? And she was like, oh my gosh, that's so silly. How does that help you? And I told her it was like really like specific questions like that help me create these characters so much more. So like, for example, with the coffee question, how does your character take your coffee? Well, in my YA fantasy, my main character, Miera, wouldn't drink coffee because she is well researched and would know that caffeine increases like your anxiety hormones and she already has like general panic disorder so she would not drink coffee and then there's like the lord of her town who is like big rich baller and bougie and posh and has to so show everyone how fancy he is so he would only drink like the most fancy expensive imported <laughs> arabica beans or something just to kind of get on his nerves his son would drink straight black coffee and just like sit there and like smirk at his dad just to like get under his skin you know just to be different and butt heads but like that is why questions like this are just so good and like crucial to me because 
I just did so much thinking and so much character building with a simple question. Once I've kind of done that a few times, I start doing some targeted brainstorming. Now, most of the time I do this with a notepad and a pen so I can really direct where I'm going. But what I do at this point is I start to uh, brainstorm how the world is set up through the social institutions. Social institutions are like the parts of a society. So like government, education, religion, media, sports, um, anything that's like an organized group and it helps run the culture, <laughs> that's that's an institution. This to me is where it gets really super fun because this is where the world building comes in. I work mainly in fantasy so that is so important to me and I sometimes spend weeks, like solely weeks of working on one institution at a time, um, depending on what I think the story needs. So for example, in my YA novel, I really worked hard on my marrow or mermaid um, military, the military institution in their world, because a lot of the book focuses on that. And I think it's really important to focus on a bunch of them, even if they don't fit into your story in the long run. At this point, I have written down all of the fun character ideas I want to play with, all of the plot beats that I think would be fun to hit, the magic systems, and of course I have the worlds and characters built up. This is in a really incoherent, chaotic list at this point. I just write the ideas as they come to me. I don't even worry about organization because that's actually what I do in this next step. And that is where I just simply go through the manuscript and kind of like color coordinate world building things, character things, and plot things. I use blue for plot, red for character, and green for world building. I just circle or highlight those things so that when I'm ready to move on to my next phase, which is the actual outlining process, I have everything a bit more organized. Are you overwhelmed by my process yet? <laughs> because I feel constantly overwhelmed. <laughs> so now we are out of the brainstorming phase and officially into outlining. I swear by John Truby's 22 Steps of Storytelling. He has a book called Anatomy of Story, which is the best writing craft book I've ever read. I highly recommend it. And in it, he lists out the 22 character beats and plot beats that all good movie stories, TV shows, whatever have. What I end up doing is I take Truby's model and I take all of the plot points and character beats and all that stuff that I want to use and try to fit them into his 22 steps. Now this time a lot of times I do have to like throw out some ideas I had or add in some ideas so I can make sure I hit all of those plot beats so the story runs smooth and good paced and makes sense. This is actually um the most stressful part of the outlining process for me because I am trying to fit all of these things together like a really difficult puzzle. <laughs> At this point we should have a completed first draft of an outline. <sighs> Buckle your seatbelts kids, it's about to get crazy. So because I'm a little anal, <laughs> I outline more than just my regular plot. I outline my subplots, my reveals, my character arcs, and any little other things I need to track. I want to make sure I've got all of those beats written out chapter by chapter along with the main plot so I know when it's time to go from chapter 12 to chapter 13 I know what's going on with the main plot, what's going on with the subplot, who needs to kiss and when, what mystery new red heron is going to be introduced, and how it's revealed and how my main character feels about it and how that fits into their character arc. <laughs> It sounds really, really intense when I say it out loud. <laughs> it sounds like a lot, I swear. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but it's so helpful because when I start drafting, it's just like brrrr, and I don't stop and I keep going because I have everything already figured out. Not that I don't have to do revisions, but like I have so much figured out that later on my revisions are just a lot easier. <laughs> it does take me a couple drafts to get this all in there perfectly. I think with um, my YA novel it took about three drafts and with my middle grade novel it took two outline drafts on these ex Excel spreadsheets to get them to where I felt comfortable enough to write them. I will say that my outlining process is not perfect, it is flawed, and it doesn't account for voice or like pretty prose or um, anything grammatical, like my first drafts are so messy. My characters in my first draft always have very little voice. Voice is something I add in a bit later. And again, pretty pros do not exist in my first draft whatsoever because I'm so focused on all of those um, outlined 
things that I'm trying to hit that those have to come later in revisions. So once I've got all of this figured out, I am finally at the stage where I feel good enough to start drafting. Now, what I do from there is I go to my Excel spreadsheet and I hit chapter one. And what I do is I just copy and paste everything outlined that I have for chapter one straight into the document and I just type right above it. This works really good because when I get done with whatever I'm doing, I just delete that part of the outline. I keep going, delete as I go. Once I hit chapter two, copy and paste, delete as I go. And that's how I write my entire first draft. <laughs> Whew. I need some water. Water. That was a lot of talking. That was a lot of explaining. So that is my pre-drafting process, my brainstorming and my outlining process. It's a little crazy. I know that. Like, I know. <laughs> it's so intense. And again, it's kind of embarrassing because like I work on my books for months before I actually start writing them. People like be like, oh, hey, how's your book going? And they're like, how many words have you gotten? <laughs> how many pages is it? And I'm like, hmm. But anyways, this is just the process that works for me. But I would love to know about your process. Like I said, I always want to learn and I'm always learning from the community and taking little bits and pieces of what everyone does. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you plot, if you pants, if you discovery, if you like headlight, right? I think that'd be super cool. Let's have a, <laughs> let's have a conversation. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.